I'm in Sydney Airport, uh, heading home to Ireland, taking a shiner with me. <laughs> I got hit by a surfboard yesterday. It's not sore, it's just awkward uh, and looks ugly I suppose, but did a good job, eh? But yeah, I'm, I'm not worried about it. I'm not self-conscious or anything. I'm just getting on with things. So anyway, I'm all checked in in Sydney Airport, waiting for my brother. He's coming through check-in now. Um, yeah, so long haul flight ahead of us. See you on the other side. That's a good eye, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, what are you doing? Scary. You all right? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you're very welcome to stop at the local time here. It's 11 a.m. in the morning. Safety please do remain seated with your seatbelt security fastened until the aircraft has arrived and stamped and the captain has switched off the fast seatbelt sign. Once again, we'd like to apologise for your late arrival into Dublin and hope that it hasn't taken you too much. Your hands, of course, if we have your latest review, so we're going to get out of those steps again. Not at the panic list, so there. Thank you and a very good morning. For the benefit of the Hartigan clan that might be watching this video, this log I picked up on a walk in a local rainforest here in Kayama, New South Wales, Australia. It's called Silky Oak and while this gift will be handed to the senior male in the family, I hope that you all will accept it as a gift. It's not even a gift from me, I guess. It's it's just me returning something that should really be in the Hartigan family in Ireland, not scattered overseas in Australia. finished this box um, last night I attached the metals to the foam by putting some pins down through the top that go over the clasps on the metals so they're well and truly secured in there and the pins for the most part are invisible when the when it's in the box I realized last night that I stuffed up in uh, this regard. I think I measured one or two of the metals to get my sizes right, but this one actually hangs a lot lower. So it will sit in the box a little bit uh, tucked up, but it's still okay. The only other thing I want to do now is make a little handle that will go there so the 
plate can be lifted out make a little handle to go there which also serves as a separator between granddad's medals and granny's medal I'll also give it another oiling I think and then we're done For the younger cousins and some of the old ones, my name is Rosemary Hartigan. My dad Tom was the eldest child of Dan and Molly. And this over here, here, is my brother John, who has the unusual honour of not just being the eldest of the Hartigan cousins, but the eldest son, where is that very <laughs> The eldest son of an eldest son who was possibly an eldest son. He was. Yeah, he was. So, Auntie Eileen says it must be. <coughs> there is a saying in Irish, on Ruddus Anab is in Cockney, what where is wonderful. And this celebration, this gathering of people to honour and share stories and memories of our family will never be replicated. This is a unique occasion, not a wedding, not a christening, and not a funeral. We are all here today to celebrate the one thing we have in common. The Hartigan family. John Hartigan and Molly O'Mara married in St. Albans Church in Emily in January 1930. John was a detective in Angarda Shiakana, and by the end of the decade, he and Molly had moved their growing family to the Folly in Wexford. Well, Wexford. Eventually settling into the Folly, they raised nine children Tom, Maury, Kathleen, Sean, Bill, Jim. Eileen, Nora, and Anne. 90 years after they married, their legacy includes 35 grandchildren, 68 great grandchildren, and 15 great great grandchildren. Little did John and Molly think as they set out on their life together back in 1930 that their family would grow and would also be so scattered around the world. Cute? Maybe. I think so. I like it. But one's not enough on its own. I need another one. Or maybe two. Because the real trick or the real skill with making these, which I don't have skills, is to make another one exactly the same or to make a taller one with the same features or make one exactly the same and a taller one with the same features
that's the candlestick you saw me making yesterday that's the second attempt at a second copy and I'm quite pleased with that not identical but very very close just unfortunate that the base has a few chunks missing out of it but not to worry I mean that's character isn't it character but I'm quite pleased that they turned out so close together hmm not bad so what I'm going to do now is make a third one but not the same it'll be probably about this much taller but use this as a guide to make the other one a big brother for these two so anyway here they are now finished product in my camera shy mammy's house in Ireland before I put the candles in them but when I put candles in them Ireland had a heat wave and the candles didn't like the heat much like the Irish people but anyway as the fella says you gotta go with the flow